Hi everyone, welcome back to A Sky Full of Stars, episode 17, where in the last episode, Akito and Hikari were doing research on the Iberial Stars, and it's because these are the stars that they want the rest of the class to see. And hopefully, one, it allows Akito to be more connected and engaged with the rest of the class because so far he prefers to be in isolation and solitude and more importantly too it will clear up the misunderstanding that Sire has once and for all so um when Akito mentioned that her eyes look like the Iberia stars she took it as an insult and thought he meant a monster, but actually, he's talking about how special she is with her multicolor eyes. And for Takeichi, well, let's forget about him because he has no intention of learning and he admits the fact that, um, well, I do bad in class, I bomb my science tests, but at least I don't go around and boast about my knowledge of science because the tests show that I'm stupid, so that's how I am. So let's continue from here. So what's going on? I hear a phone ringing. Uh-oh. So I wonder if there's a major setback. Uh oh, so Cygnus is a summer constellation. Really? If that was the case, then that meant that Iberio, as a part of the Cygnus constellation, would be a summer would be a summer star as well. So that's a major setback for um their exciting plan. Well, what can we do? In an instant, it seemed like all of our plans were derailed. In the end, it didn't matter that it was a summer constellation. Well, some constellations are described as belonging to different seasons like winter constellations or summer constellations. However, that doesn't mean that you can't or you can you can't see um, them during the other seasons. It just meant that the best time to see these is during the particular time of year. So most can actually be seen throughout the year. Okay. This fact is especially true with constellations close to the North Star. So I think um you talk about like um stars that um I think they're located from the um North Pole. And it's like well no matter how the Earth is rotating or um relative to um the position of the sun or its position rel relative to the sun, um, the star is still within... You can still see the star. Well then again, the North Pole, they only have two seasons of the year. So every year there's only two seasons. So these constellations tend to have long periods of visibility and can easily be seen for most of the year. The Cygnus the Swan was one such constellation. Okay, so it's, it's next day.
So, do you see the, the weather report? Okay, so another important factor is, is weather. Because, um, well, you know, the clouds, they block the view from the sky. So, um, despite the major setback that it's a summer constellation, um, it looks like, um, they're still able to work around it and make it work. And I think it's called the Summer Constellation because, um, well, based on how the Earth is, it is easiest to see that constellation during the summer months. Hikari said this with an expression bright enough to rival today's sunny weather. So today was the day the stargazers meet up. So we had already planned things out meticulously and had Satami Sensei review it all for us. And all that was left was waiting for the night to come. Okay, so it looks like um everything is all um all go for um this activity. So what about Saya? In an attempt to ditch us, Saya had thrown on her backpack and was headed for the classroom door. So Monogawa-san, Ikari. I interrupted Hikari as she called out to Saya and headed over to Saya myself. So what's going on? Well, I promise you'll come tonight. So um, an important requirement for this to work correctly is that Saya has to attend this stargazing event. I'm not sure what or um what she's feeling or how she's feeling. Well, I like for you to see Abirio. So Saya was at a loss for words and averted her eyes. She then outmaneuvered me and left the classroom in a hurry. So I wonder if Hikari or and Akito are worried that um Saya may end up skipping this event in its entirety. Hikari was mumbling to herself as we set up the telescope on the rooftop where we'd be observing from. Well, you know, Akito, your bluntness scares off a lot of girls. You should loosen up and smile more. Well, what about you, Hikari? You also just say whatever you feel like saying without thinking about how the other person feels. So then again, um, he feels that Ikari doesn't have um, a good way of talking to um, other people as well because um, of her bluntness. So she also has that bluntness as well. I inter interrupted you See, I, inter I interrupted you earlier so you wouldn't upset Saya. And as I answered her in the exact blood tone she just warned me about, 
I remember the frightened expression on Saya's face and felt a tinge, a twing of guilt. Well, I really wanted her to come, which is why I said something to her, but I think Hikari was right that it might have had the opposite effect. After, so after the telescope had set up, I pointed the lens at a faraway mountain and peered into the eyepiece. So the image was blurry. So this looks like um power lines. I turned the dial to bring it into focus. The image became clear and appeared upside down in the eyepiece. And that was the reason I had always thought it was broken, but I was wrong. It was normal for a telescope to show an inverted upside down image. So the way that the lens works, when an image comes to the lens, by the time it comes out from the um, I'll say um, convex lens, the image shows up upside down on the other side. So um, I think based on how the telescope is built, the image gets turned upside down by the lens. And when it comes to the eyepiece, it's, it's upside, upside down. So binoculars and spotting scopes use a prism to reorient the image. Well, then again, a binocular, you can see that the eyepiece and the um, lens, there's kind of like a shift in between, because uh, that's how you can um, adjust the um, shape of the binoculars. And in order for the image to transfer across this, I would say like this L shape, you would have to have a prism or some kind of mirror to transmit the image. However, adding the prism takes away from the image quality, the instrument itself becomes heavier and it inevitably costs more money. So obviously um, all these um, precision devices like the lens, the prisms, they have to be molded and carved to um, exact standards because that's how you can get a perfectly focused and perfectly oriented image. And to do that, it takes a lot of effort and time and money to um, shape it correctly. So um and um So you also mentioned that um these prisms they take away the image quality because um well, whenever light goes through any kind of um optical device like lenses or prisms. Not all light goes through, some of it gets lost, and especially in a re reflecting um, device like a prism or a mirror, some, some light gets lost, and if you go through many optical devices, that loss accumulates. So what you see on the eyepiece is like um, maybe about like 90% of um, the actual image or um well anyways let's continue from here and really since there is no pro proper orientation in space there's no need to correct the inverted image in an astronomical telescope yeah that, that's true So I set up the azimuth stand, setting the electrical tower at the center of the field of vision.
There you go. Next, I looked down at the small barrel affixed to the side of the telescope. This cylinder is called a finder and it's very similar to the sight on the rifle. In telescopes with low magnification, the finder has crosshairs in the center. And these crosshairs are used to find what you want to see such as the stars or any other celestial body or celestial body. Well, need needless to say, it's really difficult to find a tiny point of light quickly in the vast sky with the narrow field of view of a telescope. Which is why a finder comes in handy. Use its wide field of view to find your target first. So um, if you zoom your telescope, if you want to find an object and move it around, it's going to be very hard to do so. So that's why you have a viewfinder which magnifies the image at a much smaller magnitude. So it gives you like a wider field of view and it lets you pick um, where you want to zoom in on. It's kind of like um, how, you know, um, in some maps, like Google Maps, um, you always find images or like find a place using a very small zoom and then once you find that place you would increase the zoom up to maximum so similar to how the viewfinder works well if the finder and the telescope are both pointed at the same target stars in the finder should sh also show up in the telescope's point field of view but in order to do that, we needed to make sure that the angle of the finder matched the direction of the telescope. And together, these preparatory steps make up the optical lens alignment process. So it's trying to um, get this telescope all aligned, all calibrated, and it can't really be done once it's dark so we made sure to do it while it was still light outside. At the moment, I was attempting to align the optical lens between the finder and the telescope using the electrical tower as a landmark. Okay. So um, he's using the electrical tower as like a practice object, like um, something that he could align the telescope with, some distant object. But then um, someone else is here, so who's this person? Huh? huh? So who's Picarin? So one of the younger students came bounding up onto the rooftop. Ow? The girl's enthusiastic greeting was cut short by an emphatic judo chop to the head. Okay, so Ikari was the one that did it. And she doesn't like that name, Pikari. So seeing Ikari's head, hand still threateningly posed for another strike, the girl timidly corrected herself. What's going on? So what does he mean by playing? No, 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 it's not playing. It's a educational activity called Stargazers Meetup. And by saying really complicated terms to someone that's younger than her, I'm pretty sure she doesn't understand. So the little girl's expression turned serious once we affirmed her question.
Well, I think you can go. It's educational. So the little girl pleaded as she clung to Hikari, tugging earnestly on her skirt or a shirt. So maybe she wants Akito to um, answer, like, maybe it's Akito's decision. Okay, so he's like, well, it's not me. Um, we have to ask Satomi Sensei. Maybe she's the one that can, um, or she's the one that decides. So this girl notices Akito. So peeking out halfway behind Hikari, the, the little girl regarded me warily. Hmm, the troublesome transfer guy. I think um, we know who she's referring to. Or like the Brick Brother. Well, what was with that nickname? Okay. So, steal by Hikari's prompting, the little girl faced me and set her posture. Because of Corona Kusa Kabe. Um, I think, um. So, Kusa Kabe? So, um, I think, um, that last name rings a bell and it reminds of Akito of someone. As in, that Kusa Kabe? Okay. So she is Takeichi's younger sister, that um, class bully. Even though he does have um, well, you don't say. So um, the guy that um he's trying to beat up Akito because um one he brings a telescope for no reason, doesn't want to share, and about Saya's um. Eyes. And for some reason, she looked like she was bracing herself for something. Oh, so I'm Akito Sarami. I'm in the fifth grade. Nice to meet you, Corona. So remembering that Hikari has scolded me about how I came off as scary and blunt. I made a conscious effort to introduce myself in a little more sweetly manner. So I wonder how much false information Takichi has fed to um Corona about um Akito. So she said as she looked at me with reverence in her eyes. Hmm, is she really Takichi's younger sister? Well, you don't look like her, or you don't look like him, you don't act like him. And just that, they don't look alike at all. So there you go. And it's hard to believe a kid this cute could actually be his sister. So Corona's ears perked up immediately after I'd said that she was cute. Aww. So how does she feel about it? Is that weird? I think um, I may have exaggerated a, li a little bit too much. Okay. I see. Wait, did she just call me Aki? But um, for some reason, Aki sounds like um, 
a female's name. So did you come from a really nice place like Tokyo, NYC? Oh, I don't see anything wrong about nicknames, but I think Hikari doesn't like it because um, the nickname that she got is something that she doesn't like. Hikari? Twist. Okay, so, um, well, what's Hikari doing? More twisting. So I wonder if this is like um in Pretty Cure or Pre Cure the first season where um Nagisa always twists her little brother when she um gets angry at him. And even though the dad doesn't mind, the mom keeps telling Nagisa to stop because um hey, you're now like um a um student in the junior high. It's time for you it's time for you to grow up. And act more womanly like. <laughs> and just like in pre cure, um, when she twists the little brother enough, um, the little brother goes like, okay, I quit, I give, I give, I give, I give in. Okay, so back to the main topic. So make sure you tell Satomi Sensei that you'd like to join us at the Sargazi meetup. So Miharu-chan, you mean? But then again, it's implied to call your teacher by your first name. Some more twisting. Oh, stop it, mommy! After he car let her go, Corona cried out. My head! She said as she rubbed her temples like someone who was trying to ease a migraine. And for some reason it looked like they were having fun. Yeah, I guess that's true. But not for um Krona. I'm pretty sure Takeichi won't agree to it. It's like, um, because he doesn't like stargazing. He's like, um, why go to that stupid event? The only reason I agreed to it was because I didn't want to be the, um, big spoiler in class. But in reality, I hate that stargazing event. There's no point in science. I bombed my science tests. And I admit I'm stupid. So I'm gonna just be this way. And even though um, Hikari also bombed her science test, at least Hikari is willing to step forward, improve, and learn more about science. Which is, which is kind of like one step ahead. And I think that's a better thought process than um, what Takeshi's thinking. Well, I failed, so that's how I am. And compared to Krona, um, Krona is willing to step forward as well. She's interested in the Stargazing event even though she's not in the same class as them. But she's gonna go and ask the teacher if she can join the Stargazing event. And of course she leaves with a um, very embarrassing nickname or a unwanted nickname for Hikari. So she ran off the roof with um, just as quickly as she had come. Wow, what, a, what an energetic kid. Hmm, she kind of reminds me of you, Hikari. Um, I'm not like her. I'm not like th that little brat. I am much better. So I refrained from elaborating more since it seemed pretty unexpected to her. I didn't feel like being on the receiving end of one of her 
nuggies. Oh yeah, that's true. Hmm. So why does she even want to come to our observation tonight? Does she even like the stars? I think she's in for um other reasons, not um science or stars. Ooh, really? So there's, there's not many kids left? There was only one class in each grade at the school. The fifth grade class that Hikari and I were in had 17 people and we, and we were the largest class in the school. The classes got smaller as you went, but the fourth grade class, just one year below us, only had four kids. Wow, it's really small. And if the number of people keeps dropping, the school might be closed. Yeah, that's true. So why? There you go. So what about the dam? Uh, no, I haven't heard anything. What's this dam? Okay. Okay, so um this place is gonna be like a reservoir um for the dam. Even the school? The card not as sol solemnly. Well I don't know. So after being handed off to my grand dad, like, and a wanted baggage, it was no surprise that I wasn't aware of the town's situation. And with grand dad being the silent type, I doubt he would have told me much anyways. Well then again, I don't think he has much communication with him, he just, um, there you go, that's the, all the food that you're gonna have tonight, and he goes into his room and closes his door. I took a good look around my surroundings from this rooftop. Hmm, all of this would be under a lake. There were paddies, fields, and overgrown empty lots scattered between sporadic trees nestled amongst them. All were homes and other buildings. It was hard to imagine that everything here would be flooded and disappear beneath the lake created by the, the dam. So they need a big reservoir and um, they believe that this place is ideal for a reservoir and um, in doing so like um, they'll have to, I think um, they feel that it's easy to relocate all these people here to higher grounds, places that are more modern. And usually when you relocate someone, you also have to give them some kind of compensation, like maybe some monetary compensation. So being as new to the town as I was, I couldn't scrape together by any feeling of attachment to it. So I don't think he minds if he does end up getting relocated because of the construction of the reservoir. Well, the town wasn't special to me, so it's hard to say. I'd be sad to see it go, but I did think that losing the town would be a bit troublesome. Well, maybe um he'll get some nicer facility in exchange for relocating to um a higher ground to let them build this reservoir for the dam. I wonder how Hikari must have felt. Well, for her it's different because she's been here for quite a long time. And thinking that, I glanced at her profile, but... It was hard to tell from her expression whether she was unhappy or if she didn't care either way. Okay, so back to the telescope. 
So are you done? Yep, all done. That's the last of the prep work. And with the axis of the lens set, the telescope setup was complete. We also checked the time of viewing coordinates and the time that Iberia was set in. And as long as the good weather held up, it seemed like tonight's observation would go off without a hitch. That's good to know. Alright, let's go home then. Yeah. So Stargazing would take place at night. So we had decided that everyone should meet up again after going home to have dinner. Well, that's good. Okay, so this is the beginning of the Stargazing event. So I'll go ahead and stop here. I'm going to save that for the next episode. But we do see some development of um what um led or like um the beginnings of um what today's world was like. So like um this town it became submerged under a res reservoir and everyone got relocated and we see um might see um how Satemi since it got put out of business and now she's just hanging around at the stop and buy convenience store in present times. But more importantly, we're going to see how the stargazing event goes and more importantly, um, what Saya is thinking of. Like, um, how will Saya react to it? Um, does it change her mind? And all that will be next time. So see you later.